This week on Dirty Linen, I've been covering the issues around the closure and the slated reopening of Red Spice Road. It's been an interesting week. You know, when I started Dirty Linen, the, the idea was to dig into the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about in public. So in a way, I feel like this week has been such a dirty linen week. This is the kind of stuff that I wanted to talk about right from the beginning of this podcast, 150 or something episodes ago. But in a way, it's also been a really weird week for me because I am such an advocate for the hospitality industry. I am such a lover of restaurants and I really take absolutely no glee in being negative, uh, finding fault or bringing anyone down. Certainly, it's just never my ambition. But I think the thing that struck me about this story, and I've been in touch with the people involved, the employees, the ex-employees now, I've been in touch with them since May. And in fact, I spoke to some of them the, the, the previous December, December 2019, when I reviewed Red Spice Road, gave it a positive write-up when it had just moved to its new premises. So I've been following this and I've been a little bit on the emotional journey with the people that I've spoken to this week and I just think what I think their feelings of upset and betrayal are understandable. But, you know, I always think the best of people and I really don't like to think that anyone's a bad guy. Anyway, uh during the course of the week, some things have happened. Um, the owners of Red Spice Road, so that's Andrew Cameron and his partner Vanessa, um, started reaching out to employees in a way that they hadn't since the restaurant closed and uh, the company that employed everybody went into liquidation. Uh, I think, you know, that's good. They started reaching out, saying how valuable their employees were and uh, they followed up those personal emails with an open letter, which is on their website. And... There's a few things in there that I just don't want to let go by, so I'm going to read out the letter and annotate it as I go. So here we go. It's an open letter from our owners, Vanessa and Andrew. Dear reader, you may have read a recent story on Red Spice Road reopening and ex-staff not being contacted or compensated. Unfortunately, the writer was a bit early off the mark and hadn't called us to fact check her information. We are sure she and the people she spoke to had the best of intentions, but we really wish they had reached out to us first. I'm just going to interject myself and I'm just looking at some call records to Andrew Cameron. So I spoke to Andrew on the 18th of January at 4.24pm for 9 minutes and 52 seconds. I tried to call him on the 27th of Jan, didn't get through. I called him again on the 28th of Jan at 10.32 and we spoke for 15 minutes and eight seconds. That was, yeah, that was a pretty hefty chat. And I spoke to him again in the weeks before the story was published just to double check on the opening status of the restaurant. That was on the 11th of Feb at 5.08 and we spoke for two minutes and 59 seconds. For that one, I was sitting in my car <laughs> outside a nail salon where my daughter was getting some nails done. So yeah, I, re I really do. I remember all these conversations, but I even remember where I was sitting for that one. Uh, so I did reach out to them. The letter continues. Over the last six months, we've been trying to find a way to come back and reopen the restaurant so we can begin to recover and repay suppliers and staff who have missed out due to the devastating effect of COVID on our and other businesses. We are not there yet, but it remains our intention to try and reopen, pay suppliers, give people who want to come back their jobs back and provide compensation to those people who the government did not support due to their visa status. I think that's interesting because this is me interjecting. Uh, we saw during this week that um, the owners had everybody's email address. They have got everyone's phone number. If it really was their intention to get the people back in the business and to try to pay them what they were owed and to re-employ them, there was an easy way to reach out. Instead, what they did was they put job ads on the Seek website and the returning chef, John McClay, did post a message on his Facebook page, um, his private Facebook page, uh, encouraging anyone who wanted to to get back in touch. Christian Price, who we spoke to on Tuesday on the podcast, 
did actually put a message on that page and and mention some of the visa holders that had lost their jobs and had their um yeah been left being owed lots of money and yeah there was there was no attempt to reach out to those people at that point the let the letter continues Hospitality is all about the people. It always has been and always will be. And we want to look after the people who made Red Spice Road and Burma Lane the great places to dine that they were. Unfortunately, COVID hit us hard at a time when we had very little cash reserves. When COVID began to bite, we had just moved out of the old Red Spice Road building. It was being knocked down to a new venue and we were bearing all the associated costs that go with a grand scale build and relocation. On a personal front, we had mortgaged everything and there was nothing left. Honestly, I believe that it was a massive build. There was an, a, a, a really evident, enormous investment that went with it, and I'm sure it was really expensive. For a large part of early 2020, Andrew Cameron, Red Spice Road owner and founder, was very sick. He had stage four met metastasized cancer, so he was in hospital or at home resting and not in a position to do a lot in the business. Andrew is fortunately in remission and doing much better. His main goal in coming back to work is to obtain investment to reopen Red Spice Road. We always said temporarily closed because we're hoping to find a way to reopen. The information hasn't changed on the website since we had to close in April. Andrew is not there yet, but he is working with an investor to be able to open our doors once again. I sincerely and honestly wish Andrew the very best with his health. He did tell me about the cancer when we spoke and he said he was doing much better. And yeah, like I honestly hope he's okay and um, recovers to full strength and health. We don't know why the reporter or some previous staff members thought we had already opened and new staff hired. So I'm interjecting. I didn't say in my article that the restaurant had opened. I also don't think I mentioned, I said anything about staff being actually hired. I mentioned that there were ads on the SEEK website Andrew actually did tell me that he'd hired two staff, um, two staff for the kitchen and that because um, there'd been a fire that had damaged the air conditioning, he was now having to find work for these people to do in a restaurant that wasn't imminently reopening but that he was certainly hoping to open in the next few weeks. I wonder who those people are. John McClay, the creator of the famous Pork Belly and founding exec chef, is helping Andrew Cameron to try and restart Red Spice Road. He posted on Facebook asking who wants to come back and was excited about helping to get the restaurant going again. That's true. Ads were also posted on Seek. We would love staff to come back and we will continue to try to open. At this point, there is no deal or restructure in place and without an investor, we do not have funds to open. No one is employed and there is not a new company. We're still a way off that. I'm interjecting. That may all be true, but it's not what um, I was told. Back to the letter. We hope to get there for all the right reasons, not because we're profiting from COVID or the terrible things that have happened, but because we love the restaurant and the people who are involved. We want to be in a position to, to be able to help those affected and bring back our beloved Red Spice Road. I really hope, honestly, that they can do that. It's a real shame that some misinformation is being shared as fact. As an unfortunate result of the article, we may no longer be able to attain the necessary investment to reopen, repay suppliers and staff. That would be a real tragedy and something we sincerely do not want to see happen. We are truly sorry we ran out of money, but we did. COVID has been brutal to us all. Without customers, we simply ran out of cash. We do not want to walk away from people who have been damaged by COVID. We are all in this together and we are trying to find a way forward. We hope to have news on being able to open soon. That's really up to Melbourne diners now and the hospitality industry as a whole. Best regards, Vanessa and Andrew. I do feel a little bit uh, slighted that it's uh, it's as a result of the article that they may no longer be able to attain investment and reopen and repay everybody. Um, as the letter says, that would be a real tragedy and I really honestly hope that they can reopen that they can pay everybody back and that Red Spice Road can be embraced again, embraced again by the dining public that definitely loved it and the staff loved it too. I think that everyone that I've spoken to during the week that used to work at Red Spice Road was less, the, the closure was a real blow for them, especially for the people on visas because they were owed lots of money but also because it put their position in Australia in peril. 
but they could they sort of could understand it. Like we all know there's been a pandemic and it's been super tough. And, you know, businesses may or may not have been able to continue and some businesses had to close and everyone can understand that. But I think what they've been really upset about is that they weren't contacted during that whole second half of last year and that the first that they heard about the restaurant reopening was a post on the previous chef's Facebook page that it was happening and then they found letters, uh, they found job ads on Seek. So as um, as Laura said on Monday on the podcast, it was just she just wanted she just wanted a bit of decency and she felt that she hadn't received that i wish everybody involved all the best i would love to hear that the restaurant's reopening and i would love to hear that they're paying back the money that was owed when it closed that's it's been a big week on dirty linen it's been a big week in melbourne hospitality and yeah wish everybody a great friday This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This is a Deep in the Weeds production.